Hi! In this video, we are going to see how you can come out with a concept for your game so that you understand all the elements that you want to put on it. And for that, we are going to use my favorite technique, which is mind mapping and a tool called Kugel. Mind mapping is a creative technique that allows you to visually organize your thoughts. It's perfect for brainstorming game ideas because you can branch out some concepts and see connections that you wouldn't see otherwise. It's also good because you can see how all the peripheral concepts will lead to the core concept, to the main concept. Something that I really like about mind mapping is that it doesn't impose any rigid structure. So for instance, the way that I write down ideas, I see a chronological order or a order of importance in everything that I write down in the way that they come out. So for instance, if I think about, let's say, a boss battle before I actually th thought about making the character movement, I may lose track of everything. And the way that I use mind mapping, I can reorganize stuff because it gives a lot of freedom in the way that you structure your thoughts. And I may think about a concept later on that is required for another topic that I came out earlier on. And I can reorganize things so that I can basically just have a big picture of everything in the order of importance that I think that is more relevant for my work. So this is the Kugel interface. This is the Kugel website, kugel.it. And here on the gallery, you can see some um, mind maps showcasing Kugel's features. But let's create a new one so that we can explore it by ourselves. So I'll create a new folder, let's say uh, games. And I'll create a new diagram here. And there we have it, a blank canvas, something that we can already start brainstorming. The thing that I like the most about Kogo is that it allows us to use markdown. So for instance, let's say we want a title. Uh, I will use Pixels, Frog, Kings and Pigs asset here to build the project for this, uh, for this series. So I will put Kings and pigs actually we use this kings and pigs and let's say i want to create a description for that so i'll use control uh, return and well i want to use some uh some images here as well so i think that it will be good to use uh, a gif directly from uh pixels frog uh, asset page so i'll go to pixels frog and I think that I will copy this image address so that we can use it right here. Control return, exclamation, then the image. And there we have it. We already have our core concept for this. What? what why did it disappear? <laughs> Yeah, so there we have it. Another thing that I really like about Kogo is the navigation system. So for instance, we can basically just click and hold to navigate, uh, left click. And we can also zoom in by holding the left mouse button and zooming in by dragging this um, magnify, magnifier uh, icon. And I think that I will stay with, no, i zoom out a little bit. Yeah, and with these plus buttons here, we can start the magic. Are you ready to turn your dreams into reality? To design, develop, and launch your games from the very first line to the first dollar? We got you cover, baby! This course is designed to take you through every step from the very first line of the concept to earning your first dollar. Visit the page on each.io to learn more about the course and pick your reward. Let's turn the first line to first dollar, the ultimate in-game developer resource. <laughs> I will start with a, a branch about the game concept. And for this concept, I want to invert the perspective. So uh, the game, the, the concept that Pixel Frog come out with is that you are a human a human king that is assaulting the pig, the pig's castle, or as a pixel frog calls, the green skin's castle. But I want to come out with a different concept for that. So what I want to do is to put you in the skin of the king pig. And for that, we will have to have some obstacles and some enemies but since the game is already made from the perspective of the the human all the elements and all the other traps and hazards 
are made to oppose the human king. But on this concept, I want to take take advantage of the assets that we are we already have. And what I'm going to do is to come out with a concept that the green skins, the, the pigs, are into a revolution against the king pig because the king pig is not taking care of the kingdom. So you play as the king pig and you have to reestablish the order, the peace into your kingdom. So I will come out with the concept here and I will be right back in a moment. So this is the concept that I came out with. You can see that I'm using some markdown here. So this will be bold. This will be the first reading, hidden. Uh, this is also be bold and so on and so forth. So let's see how this goes. You can see that it's pretty nice. If you want to scale down, you can see that we have a font size to to tell you which is the current font size as well so you can scale the font uh, up or down and well the king pig needs to restore his kingdom's peace with the human king's latest assault the green skins became afraid that the king pig couldn't handle the kingdom anymore and rebelled against him <laughs> now the king pig has to put order into his kingdom investigate what happened defeat the rebels and restore peace. Join this adventure to unveil the rebellion and discover who's behind this chaos. <laughs> Sounds cool, right? So I really want to, to, to understand how this adventure will unveil. Why people revolutionize against, rebelled against the pig, king pig? Are there rebels into the rebel side? So this is something that some questions that we can ask ourselves. So how will this story fold out? How will the player explore what are the the ask the, the questions that the player will come out with so that we can provide some answers for them so the next step that we want to to do now that we have a concept to work with is to define the main loop the main game loop what are the player going to be doing over and over in the the game to build up the the game itself to build up the from the first interaction with the game to the latest interaction for instance i want the player i want the player to defeat the human human king so i will have to come out with a main loop that is engaging but will also provide the player some thoughtful actions i want the player to have some some strategies some thoughts behind their actions because since we are on the king pig size the combat will not dictate everything because the idea is that the, the king pig doesn't have many combo, so we don't have some combo uh, some combo assets. So we just have an, a single punch animation for the king pig. And I don't think that this will be enough to be engaged for players. So what I thought about is to use the diamonds, that the, the there are some diamond assets in this asset pack, and use them to bribe some uh, some pigs as well from the rebellion to turn them to your side so this is the main mechanic that players will have to deal with uh, i have to defeat some but i also can bribe some but if they are asking too much i will have to just punch them in the face <laughs> this will be the the core concept here but i will also have to give some contest why are some that are uh rebelling there are some insurgency some insurgents but i also have to i also want to have a an opposite side to that insurgent maybe not every pig want the rebellion not everything every pig wants the the revolution so there will be some dissidents as well so these dissidents are the ones that will talk more about what is currently happening what the the king pig has to solve and they will be the one that will accept some bribe and by giving some bribe to them they will give you some information about the revolution and who's behind it as i say it's something that i really like about Kogo is that we can navigate pretty easy with the shortcut so if you have any doubts about how you can navigate the the mind map that you are creating you can go to this question mark right on the bottom right side of the screen and Kogo will give you some instructions some tips how you can navigate them so I will go to the concept uh, branch and I'll just press tab and I will create the main loop main loop branch and for that then I will I will also make a description what's the first the, the second the third and so on and so forth action that will 
that that the player will have to do in order to basically uh, complete this loop and repeat it. So the first action is to defeat uh, the um, the insurgents, Insur insurgents, insurgents. Then the second thing will be to collect diamonds collect diamonds because the insurgents will also drop some diamonds but we have some crates as well so the the diamonds will be um, players can can take a chance to destroy the the crates and drop some some diamonds from them as well diamonds then the player will have to bribe the um, dissidents dissidents and go to the next level so this will be the the main loop you defeat the insurgents you collect some diamonds then you bribe the dissidents and you go to the next level after you understand everything that you i think that i will put some some something like a how many dissidents that you have on this level so that players will have to collect and explore the level searching for enough diamonds to bribe them and after the, the player bribe them, they can move on to the next level, right? So I think that uh, this will be the the, the whole the, the the core mechanic. Player will have to bribe the the dissidents. So move on to the next. I think that I'll just put next level and repeat. So this is my main loop. The next thing that I want to do is to go deeper into each step of this main loop because I want to see how these steps will actually help you with the core concept. How defeating the insurgents will help you restore the kingdom's peace. How collecting diamonds will help you with that. How bribing the dissidents will help you with that. And for that, I will create another branch. So I'll go deeper by pressing tab. And then I will go, I'm going to describing the steps. So defeat insurgents now I'll press control return and I will describe how defeating how insurgents will help you restore the peace so the idea is that the king pig needs to defeat the um, hostile rebels since they don't agree with peaceful solutions well, the, the insurgency, the in, insurgents are the, the, the rebels that are actually aggressive towards the, the, the king pig. So they are hostile against the, the king pig. They don't accept peaceful solutions such as bribing. So this is why we need to defeat them. And I will press, well, I will go into the other steps here so that we understand them. But for that, I will just press shift return so that uh, I can add other topics into the same hierarchy so shift return and then I can start to describe how collect diamonds will help you with the the core concept and I will write down everything so that we don't spend too much time on that so there we have it you can see that we don't have things organized yet so I, I will just put them into order so first we defeat the insurgents then we collect diamonds, then we bribe the, the dissidents, and then we go to the next stage. So the next stage here, collect diamonds, bribe dissidents, then next stage. And something that Kogo also offers is the ability to auto-arrange these branches. So if you hover a branch right on the node, right on, uh, on where it will branch out, you have this plus sign and you can right click on it and there is the auto arrange icon so i'll click on this and there we have it so uh we need to defeat the insurgents because king pig needs to defeat the hostile rebels since they i just uh highlight this hostile rebels Control b to make it bold and well since they don't agree with peaceful solutions Collect diamonds, the king pig's treasure was robbed <laughs> and spread across the kingdom. He needs to collect them back to back to return his wealth because wealth is power. <laughs> Bribe distance, not every rebel wants to join the rebellion. Some of them actually like the king pig and just need some insen incentives to join back the royal army. Next stage, uh, the king pig is smart and 
divided the kingdom into contingency areas and after assessing the issues in one location it's time to move to the next one so the idea is that each stage each level is a contingency area that the the king pig divided the kingdom into so that the the king pig could have some strategies based on how many of these areas need help and how to assess them so here i have everything that i that i need to do to actually start to see what i'm going to deal with with this project um after i change the color so if you want to change the color you can right click on the branch and choose one of these colors available here and I also created, based on the concept and the main loop, I created the mechanic, the mechanics and the story. And with this alone, you can already think about, you can go deeper into all the concepts. So for instance, I have the hazards, I have the, the main mechanic, which is bribing, <laughs> right? I have the hazards, the movement, the combat and the enemies. And I, in the enemies, I created, um, I made this one and I added some description so that I don't, lost track of what this could mean or that what this should mean so the crate cracker is an enemy that breaks crates and picks diamonds before the player this will create some uh this is what we called a um, friction so a friction is basically a game design uh pattern that will help you solve a problem what is the problem that i that I figure out in this whole concept here. I didn't have any reason why the player will be have some sense of urgency or something like that, or will have to actually restart the level. Well, we have some health, right? So the player will lose some health, but I want the player to have some sense of urgency because there is a rebellion going on. There is a revolution going on. So I created this enemy to convey the idea that, hey, you need to hurry up. Uh, there are some enemies that are just breaking some crates, picking the diamonds, and without the diamonds, you won't be able to bribe the the dissidents and won't be able to move on to the next level. So they are going to be around, but they are the idea is that they are not going to break crates without the players seeing them. So uh, what I will how I will play with this mechanic is that when the player enters into some place, I will think that I will use some uh, visibility notifier <laughs> so you can see that we, we already are on the the how we are going to do that phase right but let's keep on on why are we doing this game first but uh, the idea is that i'm going to use something like a visibility notifier so that when the player enters into a, a part of the game where there are some crates there will be a crate cracker uh, moving around and if the crate cracker reaches the, the crate before the player they will crack the crate and if the crate has a diamond inside of it the crate cracker will basically just grab it and put it into the, the pocket so this is kind of like uh, as I say this is to bring out some some urgency to the gameplay well and we can keep on going having some ideas for what are we going to deal with so for instance since we have combat we have some enemies we have the the bribing i will have to deal with user interface and i like to use the green uh the green color for that so for instance we'll have interface here the interface branch and in the interface we are going to have a health bar uh we are also going to need something like a diamond counter and we can go on and on so that we can express to the player everything that we are going to deal with here so that we can communicate to the player the internal game uh, state you can also play with something like uh, menus here so I will bring branch this out to menus or screens menus screens and so on and so forth let me auto arrange this so that I have more uh, more organized and you can do everything that you want here after you have some ideas after you have new concepts new ideas you can have a you can add this to this mind map and after that you can just zoom out and see everything that you came out with for this specific game concept and with things on place we can 
think about oh, okay, so this is what we are going to do in this project. So from the concept, we are. so why are we doing that? So the reason why we are doing that is because I saw that um, th the main concept, what, what, what is the reason why I'm making this game? I'm making this game, well, to be very honest, because I need to make the, a game for this specific series. And this is the, the core reason. And the secondary reason is because I want to communicate what is the other side of this assault, of the human king assault to the green skins, uh, the green skins uh, castle. And well, the importance of having this big picture with all the tasks and all, everything that you want to put into your game, it should have an idea about what are the tasks, what are the, del the deliverables that you need to manage in order to achieve the, the completion of this project. But this is something that we are going to do in the other videos because in the next one we are going to find a market for this game. And well, the importance of making the market research is so that we can assess the receptiveness of the market towards the project that we want to offer, right? So we are going to see if people are actually interested in pixel art games or in pixel art platform games, all of the things that build up our project. So for instance, maybe we'll have to give answers for people, especially if they are giving counterpoints to the product. So for instance, maybe people may say, hey, I don't think that bribing is a good mechanic to offer, especially if we are dealing with younger audiences. So we are have to, build up our target audience, maybe we don't want to target uh, younglings with this concept because bribing is not cool, right? Uh, and we have to come out with response and I, actually we will need to adapt to market demands. So for instance, if people say, hey, I don't want to be the, the bad guy, we can make some tweaks to the storyline so that it's more receptive and we can reach out to broader audiences, right? And this will, well, of course, increase the potential revenue that we can earn with this project. So this is what we are going to see in the next video. But that's it. Go to the first line to first dollar project page, choose a reward for you and make your pre-order because if you find this uh, knowledge that we saw in this video uh, valuable, what we want to offer in the course is way, way more valuable than this. This is just a small bit of what we want to offer in the course. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and see you in the next video.